Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Holy Communion service, our first digital service offering. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. These are rather strange times in which we live. We offer this time to the Lord. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen.
God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have our first reading. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old boy, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our New Testament reading comes from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you. 
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing be beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we celebrate Mothering Sunday in ways as we never have before. Many, many of us will neither be seeing our mothers nor attending the Mother Church and for reasons unprecedented in our lifetimes. This pandemic we are experiencing is changing the way that we relate to one another as we try to keep such um, great distances as again we never have before and with most as with most times <clears throat> of great suffering throughout history we see a glimpse of hope in our communities in such times only a few things really matter because of the coronavirus outbreak Many people right now are thinking this way. There's a sense that we are all in this together. Every continent, every country, class, religion, race, age, or gender. We are all subject to this crisis. And you know, suffering has an ability to pull us into a sense of oneness a sense of loving care for one another. Perhaps you've seen such loving kindness emerge in your own family or in your neighborhood. I certainly have. Mothering Sunday was never meant to be solely about mothers. Its original meaning was more about mothering. The day itself grew out of a medieval tradition of visiting the mother church what we call the cathedral and taking an offering for presentation at the altar there the fact that this was done in the middle of Lent made something of a break in the penitential uh, season but mid Lenting day as it was called was a special sort of day off a day off of the penitential rituals that had, had been experienced. And so it was also known as Refreshment Day. It was only in Victorian times that this was developed into a custom of sons and daughters who lived and worked away from home joining the families for that day and bringing small gifts to their mothers. So today, is a unique day in the year uh, to give thanks for acts of mothering itself, perhaps for our mother church, and also for our own mothers. But we must also acknowledge that this is a day in which some people, even under normal circumstances, will be all too difficult. Quiet tears will be shed by many on this day. Tears for children who have died. Tears for children who have rejected their parents. Tears for the relationships that never happened. 
tears for the children that never were. There will also, there will also be tears for mothers who have been loved and are not now sorely missed. There will also be tears for some mothers who have loved too much and for some who have not been able to love at all. And all of that, alongside the anxiety and stress that some are feeling due to this recent outbreak, the inability for some to find food or other basic necessities, because some have not shown loving kindness to their neighbors. And all in all, a day of very mixed emotions. Which brings us to today's gospel, providing a counterbalance against the risk of over sentimentalizing this day. Jesus' mother Mary is often submerged by centuries of church tradition that can eat too easily overlook the fact that she was a teenage girl, pregnant before marriage, forced to make a long journey in this last stages of that pregnancy, compelled to flee with her betrothed and the baby as refugees to a foreign land. Hardly the stuff of Clinton cards and flowers. And it's only a few weeks ago that we celebrated Candlemas and heard the old prophet Simeon tell Mary that a sword would come to pierce her own heart, a prophecy tragically fulfilled on that day as Mary waited at the foot of the cross and watched the awful agony of her dying son. Surely this is where the iconic nature of Mary finds its truest expressions, and her motherly love becomes an icon for all of our loving. She teaches us that love is vulnerable, that it suffers, that it takes risks. If we didn't love, if we couldn't love, then those painful realities that upset the equilibrium of our lives, conflicts, uh, sickness, death, loss, broken relationships, all of these would matter far less to us, but we do love, and so they hurt acutely. Mothering Sunday, placed so near to Holy Week, reminds us that a relationship, any relationship, without pain, is likely to be a relationship without love. In fact, if we love, then we put ourselves in the very path of pain and suffering. If we only knew. <laughs> to love is to make ourselves vulnerable, and our heart will sometimes be wrung, and sometimes even broken. But we cannot wish it any other way, for we are made in the image of a God of love, and love, real love, is costly, and sometimes it costs very dearly. Mothering Sunday is a day to honor and celebrate all those who have provided mothering in its widest, widest sense in our lives. People who have played vital roles, both women and men, who have been beloved companions on our journey, who have influenced, supported, nourished and guided us in our lives. My father used to say that he himself was the most doting mother in the entire school. But today's very brief gospel brings together the themes of mothering and the passion of Jesus. It's an intensely moving scene as Jesus hangs on the cross. His mother and John, the beloved disciples, the disciple close by. 
And we can scarcely comprehend the emotional and psychological pain that Mary must have felt in these moments. Jesus takes this moment of agony to say something profoundly important. To his mother, he says, here is your son. And to his dear friend, here is your mother. In other words, Jesus says, you have a responsibility to nurture and care for one another. What binds us together more than just family ties is the recognition of one another's humanity and the need to both give and to receive love. This is a whole new way of relating to one another, and it finds its origin and expression in the God whose very nature is love. It's often been said that in this moment, a new way of being family is born. An important voice that survived even the darkness of the Middle Ages, that was that of Mother Julian of Norwich, the English mystical theologian who wrote, a kind, loving mother who understands and knows the needs of her child will look after it tenderly because it is the nature of a mother to do so. As the child grows older, she changes her methods, not her love. This way of doing things is our Lord at work in those who do them. This is a wonderful Julian of Norwich who concluded, this God is our mother. So I pray that in these dark days that we're experiencing just now, will lead us toward a greater ability to give and to receive love, that gentle yet generous motherly love of God to those around us. Amen. So if you're able, we will stand to declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our intercessions. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, 
through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, that through their skill and insight, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Let's just take a moment of silence to offer our prayers to God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you like to stand for the peace if you're able? God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of that peace as you're able, keeping our distance, as it were.
Priests throughout the world are going to be celebrating Holy Communion this morning, uh, unfortunately unable to share with the people, but will take receive communion on behalf of the people. So that's what we'll be doing this morning. God of our journey, as we walk with you on our path of obedience, sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we give you thanks, because you give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal Mystery with mind and heart renewed. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast, with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with the saints and angels, forevermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make a memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Savior taught us in the contemporary version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I just have a few notices. Um, first of all, uh, just to let you know what's happening at St. Paul's um, during this coronavirus outbreak, uh, we're all very much aware that this is an extremely difficult and concerning time for people in our community. And we want you to know that we are working to, on initiatives to link people and support you, support everyone. So we're aiming to keep St. Paul's open every day. I hope during, you know, sort of till five o'clock or so uh, for prayer, reflection, uh, pastoral conversation, and just perhaps to simply be. We have the Stations of the Cross here in church that you might uh, find meaningful at this time, um, or maybe just to sit quietly. If you are able to help us to keep the church open and can spare a bit of time, then we would be grateful to hear from you. And we also realize that many people are self-isolating or self-distancing, and we encourage anyone who is living on their own or uh, are vulnerable in any way uh, to contact us so that we can uh, ensure that they access the help that they need. And they can, they can reach me on Rev. Susan at stpaulsparkside.org.uk. I also want to uh, bring your attention to the fact that um, we might all, uh, in, well, I want to invite us all to light a candle in our windows this evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, churches together are asking people to uh, place these candles in the windows this evening as a visible sign of prayer and action over the coronavirus and we ask that you please join us. I think that's all to say for now um, and also we had organized Easter lilies um, but we will instead for Easter will be um, rather than purchasing uh, Easter lilies if you would just like to send to me a request for inclusion in prayer for that day in memory of any loved ones, then I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to pray for them. As always, and if you have any other concerns as well, I'm happy to hold all of those concerns and prayers before the Lord. If you want to either give them to me, uh, send them to me, or uh, phone me with them. Uh, there's also a prayer tree in the back of the church. As you come in, you see a, a a nice tree that Doreen Hewitt made for us. And you can also put your prayers on the little uh, flowers and pin them on that tree. And I will make sure that we pray, we do go through those prayers and uh, offer them each day. Okay. So Christ give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.